Hello there and welcome to this video and uh, today I'm going to ask the question what is jazz? Okay now this thought of the discussing this came to my mind the other day I was chatting to a new student of mine and I said what music do you like and as they all say always say I like all music oh I like a bit of everything I like all music oh do you yeah yeah so I do you like do you like gamelan you know I say in a sort of facetious way and they go, I don't know really what that is. I, I don't know. All right, then, do you like, you know, Eastern European gypsy music? And they go, well, I don't know. And you, they suddenly realise, well, I'm trying to make the point that um, they probably don't like all music. And so I get them to say a style of music they don't like. And this one student says, well, I like most stuff. I just don't like jazz. Now, I ain't got a problem with people not liking jazz. But I do have a, people, a problem um, with people um thinking that jazz as a genre is the same as say heavy metal or dubstep drum and bass you know that it's just one of the styles on the list because it's not it's very easy to think that especially if you're a young person because on the internet now everything that you do is genre based you know you go onto spotify and you can click the genre and you click rock and then it's got heavy metal and then you can cl click like you know, prog metal, technical metal, death metal. Um, and you can click on that and then that will genre down into all these genres. But what that shows you is, that, is you've got main genres and you've got sub-genres. Well, for me, what is jazz? Jazz is the daddy or mommy genre of them all. Okay, so there was a revolution in music in the early part of the 20th century and it happened in America and it was really rooted down rooted around the invention of recording recording music was invented around about 1870 it took a while for people to cotton on what to record I think the very first thing they would have recorded was things like spoken word people talking then they realised, oh my God, well you can record music. And they started to record music because they recorded classical music, opera, things like this. Um, but that, those classical and opera recordings, they suddenly found there was a market for them. And it created a thing called the music industry. You know, the recording industry. We mustn't forget this. The 20th century music industry is based around recordings. The fact that you could sell recordings, you know. To the most part, there's little details to that, but to the most part. Um, of course, the great revolution that's happened in the last few years is the fact that you can no longer sell recordings. You know, so there's a window of about 80, 90 years where the music industry revolved around the ability to sell recordings. Okay, and at some point they start recording folk music, and folk music is much more in touch with people. But most folk music is is really um confined you know you go to england it's got their folk music spanish has got their folk music but in america because of um the slave system and the horrors that had happened within that that had created a nuclear reactor that had created two forms of new music so let me explain that in more detail um africans that were taken to slaves to south america were not were able to keep their culture. They were able to play the music they play. So they arrived with playing sort of this sort of African rhythmical, polyrhythmical drum choir based music, you know, very drum based music. And that directly fuses with Spanish folk music. And if you listen to Latin American music, you can hear a straight balance of those two things, African rhythms on top of Spanish folk music. When you look at the drum section of a Latin American band with the congas and the cowbells and the wood blocks, that is a direct copy of the instruments that the African slaves took with them. But in America, they weren't allowed to do that. They were stripped of their culture. Their culture was removed. It was still embodied here, but it was removed. And so they had to try and continue that culture within the framework of a whole host of different Western um, music traditions, including lots of European folk music and lots of classical music, you know. In New Orleans, as in Congo Squares is famous, you know, the African slaves were able on a certain day of the week to, to get the drums out and play, and that kept the music going. But what's really interesting 
is the way in which African music was sublimated and squeezed through this horrible oppression so that um, in the blues what you see is a, a direct, direct adaption of folk music, of European folk music, all right? It's adapted in a way where it's still entirely folk music. You know, people are form, performing this on guitars and they're performing this on, on basically European folk music instruments. And in a lot of cases, those folk songs have been adapted in a way, but they've been adapted not only with this African influence, this pentatonic and, and rhythmical influence, but also it's been adapted for the situation, the horrific situation in which these African Afro-Americans find themselves. The blues comes out of this as this completely new genre of music where the sacred and the profane have been mixed together in a really compelling way, right? The blues is one of the foundation forms of music, right? And it holds hands directly with jazz, right? But jazz is a, is, is a lot more about the instrumental form. The, the blues can be seen as... as Afro-Americans' great gift to songwriting. They ch completely changed songwriting. Songwriting has completely changed. Jazz, the music and the instrumentation is about to completely change. Um, a lot of, in the South, a lot of, um, and this doesn't get mentioned this, this much, but a lot of um, Afro-American ex-slaves after the Civil War had a certain degree of freedom and in the South, especially around New Orleans, there was a number of orchestras formed, Creole orchestras and Afro-American orchestras, where, where these musicians um, developed a high degree of virtuosity. You know, Western European classical virtuosity, but that type of virtuosity. When the Jim Crow um, laws, which is basically apartheid, came in, they were no longer allowed to be in those type of orchestras. So those virtuoso musicians then went back to playing the forms around that time, which had been ragtime, bits of early blues, folk forms. And, and the way they made a living was through minstrelsy. Minstrelsy is this horrific oppression that happened to um, Afro-Americans. But minstrelsy also was a forming ground for early jazz, where... And almost because the Afri African music's been taken with them and it's there embodied here in them, this creates a new instrumental form, which is called jazz. Now, the problem with the instrumental form is with the blues, we can go to a musician in 1920 and say, can you play us a song that you would have played in 1890? And they can play that song and we can say, well, maybe that's what the song sounded like because we're just hearing a song, we can hear the lyrics, we can see the lyrics written down. But in terms of instrumentally, we don't know what musicians were doing within jazz until it got started to get recorded. So jazz as an idea is, is, exists around the time turn of the, the 20th century with the, the first great master jazz musician, Buddy Bolden, who had a group, first jazz group. But we didn't record any jazz till 1917. And by that time, Buddy Bolden was in an insane asylum. So we never got to hear what he sounded like. The, a lot of the first great players we never got to sound like. We don't hear jazz until it's been around for 20, 30 years and it's formed, right? Now, the, when they start recording jazz, which is the original Dixie Leanne jazz group in 1917, when they start to record jazz, it's like a revolution because it sells millions, right? And the record companies go, oh my God, there's, there's a market here. The recording of jazz and then the first blues in 1920, created an industry people are suddenly looking and the reason is is because what afro-americans had done at that time was create new forms of music that were highly compelling not just to their local area but to the whole world right and i think it's because this form this form of music had introduced three things into music that hadn't been there before and the recording process was able to capitalize on that the first was the idea of improvisation. These are improvised, imp improvisatory forms, right? Very complex and com changing all the time. The way a ragtime uh, or Dixieland frontline jazz group improvise, which would be trombone, clarinet and trumpet, that's the basic group, right? No drums, 
the way they improvise is the diff is different to the way a swing group would improvise in the 30s. So this is changing all the time. Highly sophisticated, highly trained music musicians um, with a virtuoso background of creating music. But of course, the music industry didn't market it like that. They market this as jungle music. Music of pe the, the, almost like the, the noble savage, like Rousseau's idea of the noble savage, that these, these people didn't know what they were doing, they just had these inbuilt abilities. That is not true. Sidney Bechet, right? Louis Armstrong, all these musicians that came out of that period were highly trained. They read, they understood or orchestration. When you listen to early jazz, you're not hearing a simple, simple type of music. You try and play it, right? Louis Armstrong is the, is the great genius of, of jazz once it starts to get recording. He, he has an arranger's mind. I, I would say Jelly Roll Morton as well. They start to arrange the music and they, try and they start to form it and they, and they take that form and do things with it. But within that form, they are basically, um, there's three attributes, as I said, that have really been capitalized by recording. And the first is improvisation, right? This music is based upon improvisation. Before recording, musicians improvise, but I don't think they improvise in the way jazz musicians improvise. Jazz musicians codified and expanded on how to improvise. I think musicians before that would extemporize. Mozart extemporized. You know, that he would play the music and it would stop and then he would extemporize on that theme. He would make some stuff up, right? But uh, jazz musicians, they're working out how do you improvise with somebody else and how do you let them improvise without stepping on their toes? And they're coming up with ways to do that. Um, it's interesting the way jazz can be seen as really embodying freedom in a really interesting way. You know, that these Afro-Americans had been enslaved by Western ideas, but in a way they'd been freed by Western liberal ideas, which really, as soon as human beings started to value the individual, right, and not judge people by the group they were from, but to value everybody as an individual, once those liberal ideas emerged, you no longer can tolerate a slave states, you no longer to tolerate being put in a position. And these new voices have to be accepted, which has been a hard thing for Western democracies to do, but they have to be accepted. And how do you accept people? How do you have a group that works as a key cohesive whole, but still accept the ideas of the individual? That's embodied with jazz, right? Jazz shows you how to do that. And it's about improvisation. It's about Improvisation, so important, but it's also about the second great attribute that jazz brings to music. And blues, I, I like thinking jazz and blues together. So let's, let's think of jazz and blues holding hands. They're holding hands, they're, 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 they're linked, they're married, you know. And blues is the songwriting, the subject matter, that's what the blues is. And jazz is the instrumental arrangement way of doing that. And those things will truly be married in popular music. Um, but the idea of the individual voice also becomes really important. You know, that you can get up and play and sound like yourself. How do you create music where you, where you can sound like yourself? Think of that from a classical musician's point of view, right? Think of a classical musician. Now, the, a composer in classical music is like, a, is like a feudal lord. He's a totalitarian dictator. He sets the rules of the composition and the musicians have to completely conform to it, like some sort of totalitarian state, right? They have very narrow confines which they can move and show their individuality. But when the composer composes, they need to be able to predict the sound exactly, right? When you watch an orchestra and the strings are all playing together, you don't see all the bows going opposite. You see all the bows moving together. They've been trained to all play together, right? So some, one of those violinists suddenly sounded completely different. If he sounded more screechy or more smoother or his vibrato was different or he decided just to bow the wrong way, it would no longer work. The composer cannot create music unless he can predict the sound of the instrument he's writing for. 
Jazz makes an incredible breakthrough that not only will it tolerate loads of improvisation, but it will toler tolerate its own sound. Think of Duke Ellington, the great composer that, that really showed how to compose it with a jazz orchestra. So when, when he's arranging, he's not thinking, I will have that instrument play the first of that chord, that instrument play the third of that chord, and that instrument playing the fifth, which is how a classical composer, with those predicted sounds. He predicts the sounds, but he predicts it based upon the individual. You know, he will have Ben Webster play that note. He will have Johnny Hodges play that note. He will have Cootie Williams, and he imagines the sound. Now this, we take for granted now, you know, all pop music. You know, you've written a song, you know, so Mark Knopfler writes Private Dancer. And I can hear Mark Knopfler singing it with his voice, but I can also imagine what Tina Turner would sound like if she sings it. And I could go, even though Tina Turner sounds really different, her individual sound is going to improve this song. It's going to take it to another level. You start to accommodate the individuality of the sound, right? So that's the other great breakthrough of jazz. And then the last great breakthrough, and there's other ones, but I've just come up with three today that really show you the importance of jazz is the idea of groove, and groove being different to rhythm. So jazz brings in, from African music, the idea of the polyrhythm, right? And a polyrhythm is where you've got almost like two times existing at the same time. So here's a three over two polyrhythm. So, so I've got one, two, and I've got one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. And those two times are exa ex existing in the same space. Um, I'll decide which hand I want to do it. <laughs> so I'll keep swapping which hands do the two and the three. And it also brings in the idea of syncopation. So let's let's syncopate that three over two polyrhythm. So I'm going one, two, one, two. You're going to go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. And we get this swing feel. Swing. When you hear someone swinging, that that's compelling because it could be this. Or it could be this. We're hearing two times at the same time and it's syncopated. Not one, two, three, four, the one is one. So we're hearing these two things, and what we're hearing, the suggestions of other timings going on outside us, right, which is makes you want to move, right, it makes you want to move because it's, it's consonance and dissonance rhythmically embodied together, right, these three ideas, all right, are really the thing that jazz brings to music, okay, so many people, when they come to learn jazz, musicians are horrified <laughs> or inspired by the virtuoso level. Now I've tried to explain that, you know, the music comes from highly trained musicians. You know, um, people have said to me, oh, I, you know, I can play the blues. What scale do you use to play jazz? You go, there's no scale to play jazz. It's just way harder than that. And there's no, it's not rock music. It's much, much harder. It's much, very sophisticated. Um, the joy of teaching uh, students is sometimes when You've done a lot of work in explaining jazz and they've been working at it and they haven't liked it, but suddenly they get what the musicians are doing and the, the, the disbelief that you see in a musician that suddenly realises what Charlie Parker's actually doing. The disbelief, the amount of work you've got to do to get to just to understand how hard it is what he's doing. So the virtuoso levels, but the virtuoso-ness of jazz, right, the harmonic theory, the... the, the um, the, the advanced harmonic theory that is, is in so much jazz, that is not a part of jazz. That's the application of classical ideas. You know, the instrumentation, the things they're doing on saxophones and trumpets, that's the, that's again his classical virtuoso theory and a technique. Being a, because this is part of jazz, it's a part of jazz, right? But it's not what is important about jazz, okay? 
If you're looking, you know, at Bill Evans' tune and you're going, what the hell's that chord? He's got that chord from Debussy and that is where he's got that. Jazz was able to take in all these different styles of music and take like African music, Latin music, Spanish music, classical music, and then with jazz fusion, rock music, funk. It, it's, it's a form that will take all that in. The reason is, is because of these things I've said. It's the improvisational part. If you've got an improvisational part to music, then someone can come in and improvise however they want. Right? They can bring in their style of music. It will be accommodated. You know, people can bring their individual voice in. You know, so if somebody's like a flamenco guitarist and they want to play in a jazz group, well, well just play with your flamenco style. No one's going to question it. You ain't going to conform to our style. Just play in your com with that voice that you've got from that. But more importantly, play in your own voice. Find your own voice. You know, improvise, find your own voice and groove. Play with groove. Groove is a mysterious thing. I could do a whole video just talking about groove and what it is and how it works. Because all of these things, groove is also so down to the individual. This is the thing that makes jazz so great. Is the way it accommodates, and I've said this over and over again, but the way it accommodates the individual within the group. That's what makes jazz so great. So um, I hope this video has been of interest. I am gonna come back to this. I really want to carry on and uh, as, as this channel goes on, talk about the history of jazz. You know, I've talked about a little about the formation of the history of jazz, but I do wanna get into the swing era, the bebop era, the, the modal jazz, hard bop, you know, through the free jazz, the fusion, and then what's happened in, in more recent times with jazz, you know, with the turning back to sort of a tradition with people like Winter Marsalis and then the also the influence of hip hop and it's sort of diminishment and then it coming back. All those things are really interesting with jazz. But jazz is the 20th century art form. It's what everything in the music business comes from, whether it's the music in musicals to soul, funk, R&B. Because you've got to understand that jazz, the... Um, what jazz did instrumentally was so popular that all the other folk forms married up with jazz. So when you listen to country music, country music isn't just someone playing on a piano or guitar and singing a country song. There's a rhythm section at the back and that rhythm section is swinging like a jazz group. Right, if you listen to the blues, the blues is, you know, like sort of um, Brian Lemon Jefferson on acoustic guitar in the corner playing acoustic folk music. There's a rhythm section behind it. You know, Muddy Waters, he electrified it. <laughs> you know, the electrification of music comes from jazz, Charlie Christian and musicians like that. So, um, so many of the popular music forms are basically a folk form mixed with jazz, right? Instrumentation, drums, drums completely come from jazz. There's no country or blues drums. Those drummers were jazz drummers, right until, up until the 1950s and 60s, all drummers were jazz drummers. Right, the bass, the electric bass, which comes from the double bass, is a thing that comes from jazz, you know, and in Count Basie's, Count Basie's rhythm section in the early 30s, that walking bass line was invented. You know, the bass wasn't there straight away. You know, electric guitar, not acoustic guitar, but electric guitar comes from Charlie Christian. And, and the way you play it, it comes from Eddie Lang, blues, like blues guitars like Lonnie Johnson, Django Reinhardt, T-Bone Walker, the blues and the and the um, jazz guitarists really embody what's going on in the guitar. If you listen to um, Johnny Be Good by Chuck Berry, he plays a blues lick at the start, which is like an Elmore James lick. And then he goes, and that's a Charlie Christian bebop line. Blues, bebop. Right, that's that's the way it is. I'm afraid, you know, it's it's jazz is rooted in, into every music form there is. Right now, this is something for you to think about. If you are a rock musician, if you are a jazz musician, funk musician, soul musician, and you're watching this video, where is your skill? Is your skill in being able to read a score and interpret a composer like a classical musician, or is your skill the ability to improvise within a form, to have your own voice and to groove? I bet you, if those are the things you could do well, right, then you're a jazz musician, from what I've said, okay?
or at least very, very influenced by jazz. So I think I've got to the end of this video. I will come back to this again. But here's my little video about what is jazz, and I suppose it should be called, more importantly, why is jazz important, and why should we realise the, the debt we all owe to it as rock musicians, folk musicians, soul musicians, you know. Um, but again, if you like the video, obviously like it. Please put your opinion in the comments, and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I don't just do this, I often talk about specific albums and rank albums, I do all this, but every now and then I like to go and have a bit of a philosophical talk, and I enjoy these the most, so, you know, if people like them, then I will do more of these, so, you know, please tell me if you do. Okay, thanks for uh, watching again, and I will be back soon.